so close This fight my distance I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us worship in the house of the Lord together. To behold his beauty, to witness his glory in this place. The house he has built for us. A place of his power. A place of his presence. A place where we can let go of our fears and take hold of faith. A place where we can gather together as one, hearts united in praise and worship for Jesus and for all the wondrous things he has done. No calamity, no sickness, no death can bring us down. For we are standing on solid rock. We are standing on Jesus. We have brought his word and his power into our homes and into our families. But we are not meant to be separated and isolated for long. For it is not alone, but together with his family, with his church, that we will arise. Now is the time to celebrate our victory, to celebrate his name together in this house for this is our house of worship this is our house of miracles Yeah, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Huh. 
today's service. I'm saying hello to everyone here in church. Hi, I can see you all there sitting comfortably and ready for church. But I also want to say hello to our family who are online right now. Maybe, you know, taking some time off with their family because it is a holiday. Welcome to you as well. Specifically to Abigail, I know that you are tuned in right now. And also, let me say hello to Arlene, Joyce, and Mark. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, if you're joining us for the first time, first of all, good job to the person who invited you. But welcome. Welcome to New Life. If you do want to get to know us a little bit better, what you want to do right now is... Scan the QR code that should be on your screen. Look for it, look for it. Grab your phone and then, and then just scan it and you'll get to know us better. Find out what new life is all about. And I was also speaking of those who invited you. Now, if you haven't invited anyone to church yet, now is the time to do that. The best thing and the fastest way to do it is just share the link with them. Especially right now, it's a special service. It's Good Friday. It's good to, you know, celebrate and remember what Jesus has done for all of us so we're looking forward to this to that this service and uh, also let me just say hello to uh, those of you who are just joining us maybe tuned in in their car trying to figure out is it too late to join the service yet no it's not too late just come just come we will be waiting for you okay I do have a lot of announcements to go through so please bear with me these are all important announcements First of all, uh, Tetalus Thai, our art installation in Molito, is still ongoing. It is closed today because it's Good Friday, but it will resume tomorrow, Saturday, and all the way until Sunday. And also, just to let you know, that today or yesterday, no today, April 15, I'm sorry about that. So many things are happening, April 15. First of all, New Life Music launched their EP, their Soaking Music EP, and that came out on all your favorite music platform, whatever it is, Spotify, Apple, whatever it is, you'll find it, it launched today. Three instrumental musics that you, music that you can actually play while you are studying the word or going through our three-day devotional, which also launched today. So what you can do is go to our website, that's newlife.ph, and you will find that day one is already uploaded, and then come 7 a.m. tomorrow, day two will be uploaded, and day three, and so on. Do invite your friends to that. Don't miss out on that. That is one of our many Easter or Holy Week offering for you. All right, so what else is going on? Now, a lot of you have been asking, where do I find my life group? Where can I connect? Where can I find new friends? Very, very easy. All you have to do is go through our website. That's newlife.ph. And then just scroll down and you will find a life group there. And then just click on schedule. And you will see all the schedule, all the kinds of group that you, uh, that you want to go and connect with. And it's very, very easy to find it. All right, so what else? Marriage and parenting is happening. Okay, that is happening uh, for all for uh, married couples out there. Happening on April 22, that's a Friday at 7 p.m. It's happening here on site at the third level sanctuary. So all you have to do is register with them. Go ahead and look for Christine Caballero. The number is 0917-829-9052. But if you are here in church, all you have to do is approach us at the next step. Next step, table. All right, so I know that you are all excited for the service right now, but I'm going to have to ask you to please get your communion elements because we are going to have communion today. So whatever you have, you may you have biscuits, that's fine. Crackers, that's fine. Water, soda, whatever it is, that's fine. Just make sure that you tell everyone in your family to get uh, bits and pieces of the crackers and uh, also a small amount of water or juice and prepare for our uh, communion later on. So what's happening, uh, El, what else is happening today in the service? Of course, we are going to celebrate and um, remember what Jesus has done for us uh, many, many years ago. And it's the reason why we're here. We have freedom to you know, worship Him and freedom to love on Him. And it's because of everything that He has done. So I'll see you in the service, enjoy.
Come on, just lift up your hands worthy right now. He is worthy of our praise. But it is really a good celebration of God's goodness to us. Amen? Sabi nila, Biernes Santo sa Pilipino, patay daw ang Diyos. No, we're just remembering and celebrating God's redemption. So, hindi po patay ang Diyos. Hindi bawal ang mag-ingay. Kundi ngayon ay araw that we will celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Amen? Yeah, so that's why we would like to welcome everybody here. And I'm sure God has a word for you. And the best place to celebrate Semana Santa is in church. And to receive a word from heaven. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Now I would like to welcome, if you are here for the very first time, somebody Bring, uh, brought you here, drag you here, drive you to come here. We welcome you to new life. So, kung ito po yung first time ninyo, can you please uh, just uh, uh, pakitas lang po yung mga kamay. Anybody first time here to the church? Hallelujah. Yes, we see one there. Welcome po sa new life. Yes, welcome, 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 welcome. We're glad that you're here. like also to welcome those people online if it is your first time to watch our good friday service just type in say it's my first time and it will not be my last time yeah amen come on let's give a clap offering to the lord for that welcome to those who are here and welcome online and let's just let's just worship god let's just continue to just honor his presence in this place Again, I would say, God is not dead. He is alive today. Amen? And we'll just celebrate His goodness in this place. So, let's open up in prayer. Father God, we thank You for this moment that as we gather together and remember what You have done on that cross, Lord Jesus. And we're here not just as a religious celebration, but it is a place and a time for us to just remember how great is your love to all of us that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believe on him should not perish but have eternal life so we thank you lord and holy spirit just speak to us and just continue to put us into a place of not only just remembering but experiencing your goodness to us. And we give you glory and give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. Come on, let's worship. Let's worship. Of 
what the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you'd believe me now. He turned my whole life upside down. Took the old and he made it new. That's just what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story of why. The power of the blood. Oh, I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy, the power of His blood. Oh, there's so much power.
Sing it one more time, now I'm alive. Say, now I'm alive to tell my story, how I've overcome. It is goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Say, I'm so glad that I'm free. Say, wasn't based on what I It's your goodness and mercy and the power of your blood. It's your goodness and your mercy and the power of your blood. It's your goodness and mercy and the power of your blood. Let's continue to worship Him. God, where we would be without Your grace, Your love, and Your mercy. God, we remember what You've done on the cross. We thank You, Lord God, for the blood that was shed for our sins, for our iniquities. God, we thank You that we can receive our healing today. And so let's just worship Him. Let's lift up our hands, let's lift up our voice, and let's Let's just worship Him today.
every hand's lifted up, we sing hallelujah. Everybody, one more run more round. Come on, lift your hands and sing. Come on, he's worthy, he's worthy. Jesus is alive, he's worthy, worthy of our worship, worthy of our praise, worthy, worthy of our adoration, worthy of our, of our blessing. We bless you, we honor you, all glory and honor, all praise to the one, to you, the name that is above every name, Jesus, the one who loves us the most. We worship you, we worship you. Come on, one more round. Sing here. 
His goodness. This service is celebration of what He has done for you and for me. It's wonderful to see. It's wonderful to know. It's wonderful to have a revelation of the cross and what He has done. And the meaning of the cross, the reason why we're alive today is because of what He has done. We remember, Lord. We remember Your goodness. We remember Your faithfulness. We remember, Lord God, Your love. We are saved by your mercy. We're saved by your grace. Father, we worship, we adore, and we give you worship today. Our highest praise. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We'll take communion right now. This part of worship. You know, the bread represents the body that was broken. You know, I just was watching um, YouTube and, you know, a medical doctor was, was explaining what was happening to Jesus at the time of crucifixion. It was just so... I was so touched. I was just moved. You know, I, I know... I kind of know a little bit, but it's good to remind yourself really of what went, what happened during that time. That he went through all of that for you and for me. You know, the body is a good reminder. The bread is a good reminder of the, the body that was broken for us. And then the juice represents the blood that was shed so that you and I could have forgiveness of all of our sins. Sometimes we hear that. Sometimes we even sing about that. But does it really make a difference in our lives to know what He has done? Amen. That is our heart. That we will not just sing about it. That we are not just going to, you know, think about it. But it's going to really have, we are going to have an experience. I'm excited to bring the Word. You know, the impact of what Jesus has done. It's not just one momentary thing that happened 2,000 years ago, but the impact continues until all generations. Amen. And that is why it's a good reminder. That's today as we take the bread, you know, the bread is the brokenness. The Bible says that by His stripes, we were healed. You know, He was scourged. He was tortured. He was scourged and and what happened was, do you know that the body, his back was so open that you could even see everything inside. So open. And one thing that I was uh, watching said, you know, the doctor was saying that during that time, it really depends on the, on the Roman, you know, torturer, the person who's, you know, ha has the whip who was uh, torturing Jesus. If he is really going to go all out, a person could die and not even reach crucifixion. But imagine that, you know, even 
that, Jesus was opening His heart to us. He could have said no more. He could have said no more. Ayoko na. He could have said, this is not worth it. Right? But He pursued. He moved forward. He allowed us back to be open. By His stripes, we were healed. Every sickness, every disease has an answer already. Even COVID has an answer already. And every, any sickness that they are going to still discover has an answer already. Amen? The healing is in the body of Jesus Christ. And so if you are sick in your body right now, if you're sick online, on site, as we take communion today, remember what Jesus has done. Amen? Remember the body that was broken. And so as you take communion, you say, thank you for my healing. Thank you for my healing. If you remember a person or a family member who's sick, thank you for my healing. Amen? And also the Jews. What happens is the blood that was shed before the sacrifice was only just so that to cover the sins. But the perfect sacrifice, Jesus came. He offered His precious blood so that one time, one sacrifice was good for all time. And because of that, today, those who've received Jesus as personal Lord and Savior could now come under, under open heaven, could now experience full life, could experience living under open heaven. That you can expect, you know, God favoring you because you're a son and a daughter of God. Amen. So much to see and so much to know and experience under this new covenant. Amen. So as we take the... the the Jews, remember, it was His blood that washes, washed all our sins away. That you are now free from sick sin. That you can now live for God, alive in Him. Amen? Are you ready? Father, we love you. We thank you for a reminder. We take the bread that signifies the bro your brokenness, but for us, it's our wholeness. And we take the juice that signifies that our, our sins have been forgiven, that we are now under the new covenant of your grace. We love you. We take this with gratitude. We take this in remembrance. In Jesus' name, let's partake of communion.
This is my story. This is our song. Praising our Savior all the day long. This is our story. This is our song. Praising my Savior all the day long. My Savior. story that's why we're alive today this is my story this is my song raising my savior all the day long this is my Jesus, we love you. Thank you for loving us to the death. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, to life. We are grateful people. We are grateful people. We are grateful people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. happening here is not a religious thing we have a relationship with him and that is why we can express our thanksgiving we remember what he has done and that's the reason why we are alive today we will take time to worship we will take time to honor him because he deserves he deserves it oh the cross of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus. Dami ko na mga kantang dumarating eh. <laughs> Baka hindi na tayo matuloy sa word, uh, Pastor Nash. Amen. Are you glad you're here in church today? Come on, I'm glad I'm here. We're celebrating. Come on, we're celebrating. Online, I'm glad you are here on site. I'm glad. Come on, one more round. Can we give Jesus praise? Come on, thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house today. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Daryl, why are you leaving? I want you to stay. No, I'm just joking. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I particularly asked Pastor Nash to sing that song that I was selling Cyrus. That is like my all time favorite. Hallelujah. That's been tagal na no, no? That song? Yeah. You were, you were not yet alive during that time? <laughs> no, but it was powerful. Amen. It just, I like the part, when I lift my eyes to you, I lift my eyes to you, creator of the world, and I stand in awe. At the end of the day, it's really him and us. Amen. It's all about him, all about what he has done. Amen. 
so beautiful. I'm so glad that we can come together. I remember <laughs> last year, it was lockdown. <laughs> and we were, we were doing uh, Good Friday, even Resurrection. I remember we recorded Resurrection service, and all of us were watching, you know, uh, online. Praise God that we can meet today. Amen. That's why when the doors are open, come. Amen. Let me encourage you to come. Praise God. I remember last year we were just few, but today we're many. Amen. We're many. Amen. And declaring what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. Good Friday, 2022. Friday is normally something we look forward to, right? Weekend, right? But this particular Friday, a man was crucified, spat on, whipped, tortured, and nailed to the cross. The physical realities were definitely horrific, but the implication in the spirit was astounding. What happened in the spirit was astounding. What is so good about this particular Friday? So let's go to John 19, verse 28 to 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the, the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel, a vessel of uh, full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled the sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, so many um, meaning here, but we're not going to go there for lack of time. He said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. In Mark 15, we read, with a loud voice, you know, he breathed, uh, with a loud cry, he breathed his last. According to Bible scholars, this loud cry may have been those very last words that, Jesus, that John records, it is finished. All right? And if you need the title for this message, it's the title, Tetelestai. Tetelestai. What is that word, Tetelestai? Tetelestai in the Greek, the word in the Greek, Koine Greek, or the common Greek, is the word for it is finished, it's actually tetelestai. Or teleo, the verb, and then coming from the word teleo is tetelestai. It means done. It means accomplish. It means paid in full. This is what Jesus spoke. The last words, actually this was the sixth statement Jesus uh, mentioned. He said, it is finished. And then the last word was, Father, I commit my spirit to you. All right, and then he breathed his last. Last words. Among you know that if a dying person is speaking something, it's very important, right? You've been to a, you know, the side of a precious friend or family member who was whispering his or her final words. Very precious, very important, and we will treasure that. Jesus was mentioning something in light of the in light of his ministry. The reason why he came, he came for this. For this moment he came for that moment that he was at the cross and he spoke he fulfilled everything according to the law according to the requirements of God and he spoke it is done it is finished paid in full amen you know the meaning of the word Tetelestai, like what I mentioned, is it is finished. It signifies a successful end to a particular course of action. It is a word that you say when you reach the summit of Mount Everest and, says, and say, it is done. Or if you like finish the course, like uh, you're, you graduate from uh, college or you, you graduate from any degree, you say, it is done, right? Or when like you finish a very hard routine or anything like a team building or, you know, when it's really a process, at the end of the, of the time you, you receive the reward or anything, you say, it is finished. When you are able to pay your, your house for, you know, for 15 years, you say, it is finished. Done. Who among you believing for that? In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. When you've been waiting for your breakthrough, and then the breakthrough came, you're saying, it is done. The believing is true. It is done. Come on. Hallelujah. So it is that word. It does not just mean I survived. 
It means I did exactly what I set out to do. And this is what Jesus was speaking. It's he did not just say, I survived. He said, it is finished. That means I did exactly what I set out to do. In John 17, verse 4, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given to me. You know, that word tetelestai is actually, that Greek word is so ordinary that it is used servant to a master. It's used in the everyday language during that time. So, a servant to the master, it is finished. I have done all that you required me to do. A military general, he watches from the battle, uh, the battle from the hilltop where he sees his army and he sees his army winning. He now begins to declare, it is finished. And do you know, the high priest, of course, when he sprinkles the blood on the mercy seat, the sacrifice really, God's, uh, God's wrath had been satisfied or been covered. Because during those times in the Old Testament, we know that the high priest enters the, the tabernacle once a year. You know, with the blood of the lamb, a precious lamb, all right, a spotless lamb, and then he sprinkles it every, every year. And then the high priest can, can now go out of the tabernacle, right, and, and to the people. And he is going to mention in Hebrew, tetelestai, it is finished. Among you know, this is what Jesus has done. The precious lamb of God, you know, came and the lamb of God said, he, he himself said, it is finished. It is done. The sacrifice has been received. It is, it is accomplished. Hebrews 9 verse 12 in the ESV version, it says, He entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of His own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Can someone say hallelujah for that? Amen. Verse uh, 26 of the same chapter, For then He would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as... but as it is, he has appeared once for all. Everybody say once for all. Once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. I want you to notice these words, and I'm going to repeat it in a while. Once for all. Single sacrifice, good for all time. I want you to notice that because there is a, that's a, it carries a major imp, you know, implication. It carries a major meaning for us. Okay, so let's continue. So I said the servant to the master. They, this word is being used in the everyday, you know, conversation. Servant to the master in the military, you know, the high priest speaking after once a year getting out, uh, performing the, the, the duties and then performing the ritual and then able to go out and says to the, to the crowd, it is done, it is finished in Hebrew. Now, do you know that it's also a business term? It's a business term. So, I, I research, research and uh, archaeologists actually have uh, discovered ancient receipts that have been canceled out, all right? In this way, using the word tetelestai or its abbreviation. So, they stamped the ancient receipts with this word paid in full, all right? Paid in full. Do you know that because of what Jesus has done, our debt has been paid, our debt, your debt has been paid, all right? It's no longer our debt because he carried it, and now our debt to God has been paid by Jesus Christ. So it's a business term. They use that, right, during those times. Hebrews 10, verse 12 and 13 in the New Living Translation. I want you to see this. But our high priest, this is Jesus, offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins. Single sacrifice for sins. Why single? Because before that, there were a lot of lambs. There were a lot of sacrifices every year. But when Jesus came, he only is the worthy sacrifice that can meet the justice of God. All right? And so today, he said, because of uh, what he has done, he offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Good for all time. So God received that sacrifice, and the Bible says the Holy Spirit penned it. He said, it is good for all time. 
So what's the meaning of all? All means all. Lahat. So that does mean it means that it is one sacrifice that is good for all time. I'm getting somewhere, all right? Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. So sitting down means that the reason why he sat down is because the work has been done. The work is finished. You are sitting, I am working, I'm standing, right? So this is what's happening. You are sleeping. No, you're not sleeping. No, I am standing. So I am working. You are receiving. So the reason why if you see the word sat or sit in the Bible, it really represents it's a done work. Jesus sitting means that he has done, he has finished the work. And then in verse 18, it says, And when the sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. So maybe some of you are asking, what? was finished. When he spoke, it is finished. What was finished? So let me give you three things quickly. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. Para when you hear and you know the word, uh, it is finished, or the, the word tetelestai, and the phrase, it is finished, you know what was finished. Okay? So verse 13 says, Colossians 2, And you were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our what? So he forgave all of our sins. What was finished? That day when Jesus died, that is, the only, that is also the day wherein, listen to me, death died. Death died. Why? Because now we have now the way to become alive. Before, death has like hold on everybody because the sacrifice was not yet accomplished. But because of what Jesus has done for us at the cross, you know, today we can be made alive. We were dead before and now we are alive. So what was finished? Death died. All right, based on this verse, he made you alive with Christ for he forgave all of our sins. All of our sins. Look at verse 14. He canceled the record of charges against us. Hallelujah. Amen. And took it away by nailing it at the cross. Resurrection Sunday, we're going to be talking about the nails, the crown of thorns, and the keys. All right? He canceled the record of charges against us and took it away, nailing it to the cross. That day when Jesus died at the cross, your death was canceled. All right? Your death, ang utang nyo, <laughs> ang utang ko, you know, our sins, was sin death was canceled. He canceled the record of charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Among you, for example, ha have, for example, 50 million in debt. And then someone comes to you and says, I will pay it all. Canceled, paid in full. How are you going to react? Amen. You're going to react exactly like that. That's why we need to remind ourselves what has happened. Because it was not just a monetary uh, a death. It is our sin death. And Jesus canceled it by dying at the cross. That's why we believers, we need to be, you know, most... I know we are blessed believers, but we must be so grateful. Amen. We are people of great thanksgiving. Amen. Because of what, when we remember what he has done, all of us are just going to just burst out in, in praise because of... of of this revelation. So the debt was canceled. I'm just reading the word here, okay? Look at verse 15. And in this way, he disarmed the principalities or spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. What happened? First, the death, you know, died. Number two, your debt was canceled. And number three, the devil was defeated. What was finished? All of that. Death died, you know, your debt was canceled, and then the devil is now what? Defeated, all right? So in this way, he disarmed. Tapos na. 
the principalities or spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them pub publicly by his victory over them on the cross. The devil thought that he won. But among you know, God always has the last laugh. Amen? So when the devil comes to you, you tell the devil or the circumstances or the enemy, you know, comes to you, thoughts and all, tell the devil, you're defeated. You're already defeated. And greater is he who's in me than he that is in the world. We need to know our identity. We need to know our authority, be all because of what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Now, that's very good. But I want to move this revelation forward. Are you ready? Because God has been speaking, and I want you to see this. Verse 13 again. It says that then God, you were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away, then God made you alive with Christ, and He forgave all our sins. God already forgave your sins. And the Bible says all our sins, and there are many supporting verses because of one single sacrifice, it is good for all time. So let me suggest and present this, that your sins have already been forgiven. I can say that it is past sins, yes. Present sins, about your future sins. Kasi all eh. Now, Pastor Giselle, wait a minute. Wow, that's a big revelation here. All right, you know why I'm doing this? Because I'm giving justice to what Jesus has done at the cross. And we need to preach this. Okay, we need to preach this. What does that mean, Pastor Giselle? If you say to the people, Pastor Giselle, that all their sins have been forgiven, people are going to go out and keep singing, sinning because forgiveness is all around. God has already forgiven us. Now, wait, wait, wait. If you think like that, something is wrong. Don't think like that. Okay, don't think like that. If you think like that, you do not understand the impact, the magnitude of what Jesus has done for you. If you truly, truly understand, if something or someone was so good to you, so good to you, right, would you want to hurt that person? No. That is why the gospel must be preached in the right way. The simplicity of the gospel, because I believe the heart of man, when the goodness of God is preached, the goodness of God will lead them to repentance. Amen. Sometimes we complicate the gospel. We don't need to complicate the gospel. Oh, we need to, you know, e eliminate some things with regards to how we present the gospel so that it can be seeker-friendly. No, 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 no. Preach the full gospel. Amen. As simple as Jesus died at the cross, he died at the cross for you and for me. And I believe the goodness of God will lead people into repentance. Amen. Because the Bible is clear. Let's go back. The Bible is clear. Forgiveness is already given. Amen. Forgiveness is already given. So do not think, oh, I can go out and sin because, hey, I'm already forgiven. Where does con confession come into play? If I'm already forgiven, is this good? Because when you understand this, this will lib liberate you. Now, let me read this. Forgiveness is freely given, and as a believer, it's already in your account. Everybody say account. It's in your account. You're already forgiven. All right? But if you still decide to live in ways of sin, then the result will be misery. The result will be cursed. The result will also be even death. Okay, so the believer will not really enjoy the power of forgiveness, the freedom of life. Why? Because sin has consequences here in life. Right? So let us be wise, understanding that yes, I've been forgiven, and that will propel my heart to passionately run after God and live for Him. Are you following? It will cause you to really live for him after what he has done for me. Now I know that forgiveness is in my account and I want to live in that reality of his forgiveness, the freedom of the forgiveness that God has given to me. Amen? It's in your account and you know what? I want to possess it. I want to live it. I want to experience this freedom that he has given to me. Amen? So, don't give, when you hear words like this, don't ever say that, oh, I have now a license to go out and sin. 
because everything has been forgiven. No, 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 no. Actually, the more you see His forgiveness, the more you're going to say no more to sin. Right? Because I've been freed from sin. Amen? I've been freed from sin. Is this getting, is, this is good? All right? Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Okay, this is a good, uh, good Friday. And so I believe that all of us are going to be liberated. Well then, what should we keep? Uh, what sh uh, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of His wonderful grace? Paul, so Paul said, of course not. Everybody say, of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Okay, so, or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined Him in His death? For we died and were buried with Jesus, uh, by, uh, with Christ by baptism, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Amen. Can you see? Remember the message? Are you in Adam or are you in Christ? Okay. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. And we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin may lose its power in our lives. Sin may lose its power in our lives. When you see your forgiveness, you are blessed. You are the righteousness of God. The more you understand your identity, that will now loosen the power of sin in your life. It will not actually empower you to sin. It will empower you to say no to sin. Amen. Diba? All right, let me continue. I'm just reading the word here. So verse 5, since we have been united with him. Tapos ko na nabasa to. Okay. Verse 6, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin may lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Okay, for we are a child of God. Verse 7, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. No more power of sin. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go out and sin because I've been forgiven. No, that means you do not understand what really happened to you in the new creation. Hindi nyo naintindihan what happened to you the moment you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you do not know what's happening, what happened to you, come to church. Because we're going to explain it to you. Amen? Because all of us are going to go higher, right? Amen. And so verse 8, And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with Him. Now verse 11, So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. When I hear I've been forgiven, all right, you know what? I will consider myself alive in God and dead to sin already. Because of what he has done for me. Amen. So verse 12, do not let sin. Now you have now the power. You have now the empowerment to not let worry, fear, sin, temptation control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Or do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, you give yourselves completely to God for you were dead but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Is that so clear? Amen. So when I hear, you know, I have been forgiven. And you know why I'm doing this? Because I want to again give justice and give true recognition to what Jesus has done at the cross. He died one time, and that is good for all time. Because if that is the case, that it's not good for all time, then he needs to come back again and again and again because we always sin. We always sin. But no, it's a perfect sacrifice. The cross is a perfect sacrifice. And that's why when he was resurrected, finished everything and you and I now can have freedom because what happened was it was not just behavior modification don't do that don't do this don't touch that don't drink that don't speak that it's not about that right 
but it's all internal. And when the change happens from within, there will be an empowerment now to change the outward. Amen? I pray that this Holy Week, you will have an encounter with the living God, that there will be some sin, some things that needed to be taken away, that you will now begin to live free. The free, the, the, this worry, the fear, and all of those things are going to be taken away so that you can now be able to live light and resting free in Jesus. Amen? So this is what God wants us for, for us to understand. Now, if you sin, what do you do? You confess. What do you confess? You know the word confess means to speak the same thing. To speak the same thing. So when I confess, I say what Jesus has spoken. Lord Jesus, you know, I thank you that you have already. I confess of my sins. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I've already been freed. I received your forgiveness in my life. Amen? Because some people, religious mindset will do, if I sin, I must confess to earn forgiveness. You know, it's already done. So what do you do? You confess because you're already forgiven. To receive forgiveness. Amen? Are you, is this clear? So you confess not to earn you know, religion will tell you, you need to do this, you need to pray this, many, all of these things so that God will favor you. No, 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 no. It's already done. So you confess now to receive forgiveness because it's in now in your account. You are now possessing that forgiveness in your life. Amen? So when you confess, you move on. You move on and continue. Do not allow condemnation. Do not allow guilt. Do not allow shame. You know, to, to, di to dictate, you know, how you live. Of course, sin has consequences. Depends on the sin that you make. It will have consequences in this life. But the more you understand that there is no more guilt and no more condemnation, the more you're going to, you know, be faster in fulfilling that consequences or overcoming that, that, that process of restoration. Are you with me? So it says here, it's so clear. Amen? So it's so clear that God is wanting us to see because the work has been, is, it is done. The word tetelestai, the work that God has, has spoken, has, uh, has, has done for all of us when he spoke, it is finished, tetelestai, then we are now free. You and I are free. Amen? One last thing that I want you to see. Okay? Is the structure of this word. Can I have Darren come up? Darrell, come up. Okay. The structure of this word tetelestai. This word tetelestai is in the perfect tense, which means, all right, it's so significant. It speaks of an action which has been completed in the past with results that continue unto the present. So it has been done 2,000 years ago but it can, the effect continues until today. You know, past tense speaks of this happened. But perfect tense adds to the idea that this happened and it's still happening. It's the effect is still happening today. So if Jesus says, you know, he purchased your freedom, you know, today, freedom from sickness and disease, you know, 2,000 years ago, the impact of that is still good today and it's good for all time. Amen? When, when Jesus, you know, purchased your freedom from sin, the impact of that, you know, is still good today. That's why in this church, we are, I, I just heard that uh, an average of 50 people, new people are coming into the church every Sunday. Amen? And we have like, um, more people receiving Jesus. I don't know how many, but every Sunday, new people are receiving Jesus as their, as their personal Lord and Savior. You know why? Because salvation that happened 2,000 years ago, it's still in effect today, and our part is just to receive. Just like the thief, he says, Master, you know, remember me when, I, when you get to your, to your kingdom, right? You know, the same essence is still in effect today the moment a person receives Jesus as his 
or her personal Lord and Savior. Aren't you glad? Amen. That, that what Jesus has purchased at the cross, it's still in effect today. I love it. In other commentaries, it says, when Jesus says it is finished or completed, what he is actually saying is, it is finished and will continue to be finished. Hallelujah. Amen. It is finished and will continue to be finished. All right? The reality rests in the... the and because of this, this is my last point, all right? And because of this, what Jesus has purchased at the cross is still in effect in my life today. And the result of that is I can rest. I can rest. If He loved me, you know, He loves me and He loved me and He went to the cross for me, today I can receive that same word in my everyday life knowing that if He did that for me 2,000 years ago, I know that He loves me still today because of what He has spoken. It's still in effect today. And today, I can rest because I remember the cross. I remember what He has done. He did that for me. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross. He endured the cross. You know, going back to that, to that um, YouTube, and I'm going to end, you know, it, it was just fascinating, but yet I was so moved. Do you know that, of course, in Psalm 22, verse 14 to 16 in the New Living Translation, let me read this first before I end. It says, my life is poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, melting within me. And this is, this is like... Uh, uh, the psalmist was portraying, was prophesying actually what was happening to Jesus at the cross. My strength has dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. This was happening. This was a description of what was happening in, you know, to Jesus during that time. The nails, oh, I tell you, the nails, like, like seven to nine inches long, and they nailed Jesus here, somewhere here in the wrist, All right? And of course, that is the one that holds Jesus at the cross. Now, let me read something, and I pray that this will bless you. It's, this will be kind of graphic, but I want us to leave this place with really an appreciation and a thanks and a worship to what Jesus has done for us, really. Okay, let me read this, and we're going to end. The left foot is now pressed forward or backward against the right foot, and both feet extended, toes down. A nail is driven through the arc of each, leaving the knees moderately flexed. The victim is now crucified. As he slowly sags down with more weight on the nails in the wrist, excru excruciating pain shoots along the fingers and up the arms to explode in the brain. The nails in the wrist are putting pressure on the median nerves. As he pushes himself upward to avoid this stretching torment, he places his full weight on the nail through his feet. Again, there is a searing agony of the nail tearing through the nerves between the, the bones of the feet. At this point, as the arms fatigue, great waves of cramps sweep over the muscles, not, knotting them in deep and re relentless throbbing pain. With these cramps comes the inability to push himself forward or upward. Hanging by his arms, the muscles are paralyzed and the muscles are unable to act. Air can be drawn into the lungs but cannot be exhaled. Jesus fights to raise himself in order to get even one short breath. And that is why, so let, me, let me continue to read. Finally, a carbon dioxide builds, finally carbon dioxide builds up in the lungs and in the bloodstream and the cramps partially subside and he is able to push himself upward to exhale and bring in life-giving oxygen. It was undoubtedly during these periods that he uttered these words, it is finished. 
So when he pushes himself up, he, you, he breathes, all right? And he utters words. So, this finish. You know? Oh, God. <laughs> Amazing. And he did that for you and for me. I will not go on because that's kind of... But do you see it? He endured all, all of that for you and for me to prove that He really loves us. Amen? And that is why we can experience freedom today. We can experience His favor. We can experience His goodness. We can experience His love. That you can continue to live your life. I know there are many challenges. I know there are many pains, many things that many people are going through but I pray the reality of the cross that he what he did for you you know that you will remember his love because what really held him there were, were not the nails you know he could easily call legions of angels to save him what held him there was his love for you and for me and that is why today for everyone in the room online on site I pray that we will give, you know, our lives back as a response. His desire is that we live our lives free from the, from the sin that, that, will, that will put us into misery, that will try to hinder us in the call and the destiny that He has prepared for us. I thank you for freedom in the house. I thank you for freedom in this place. Amen. Father, I thank you for what we are receiving today. A reminder, this Good Friday, it is truly good because we remember your goodness and your love for you, for all of us. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for an empowerment. I thank you, Lord God, for an empowerment to see, an enlightenment to see, an empowerment to live life to the fullest. Father, I love you. Thank you. Can you just lift your hands and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for this holy moment. Thank you for lives. Thank you for light. Thank you, Lord God, for peace coming in. Thank you for rest even. Thank you, Lord, for even right now as we are had, having a, that revelation of your love and what you've done at the cross when you spoke, it is finished. Even rest now is coming in. Faith is rising up. If you did that for me, then I will be okay today. If you went that extent, you, you showed and proved your love for me that way, then I will be okay today and in the days to come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for rest. Thank you, Lord God, for peace. Thank you, Lord, even for freedom right now. Thank you even for healing in bodies. I sense that God is even healing bodies in this room and online right now because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we can now receive wholeness and peace and healing right now in the name of Jesus. Not only physical healing, but emotional healing right now in the name of Jesus. We're receiving that right now. All you need to do is grab a hold of that. Lord, I receive. If you have a sickness or if you have a problem, you're facing up that problem right now, you begin to say, Lord, I receive that. I receive the answer to that problem right now right now. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my healing. I receive the wisdom. I receive the strength to endure. I receive the patience that I need right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Father, we thank you. There is freedom in this house. Thank you, Lord, that you're moving and you're touching your people today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I sense that there are people right now changing, making a decision not to continue in that lifestyle of sin and now people are saying i am free from sin oh god has already forgiven me and now i want to live in that forgiveness i repent of my ways and i turn around and begin to live for you god because of what you have done for me i sense that in jesus name a turn around for people a turn around for people in jesus name in jesus name amen and amen amen Come on, let's just thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the day. Amen. One last thing. 
you know, it's truly a good Friday. And if you are here, you are here in the room or you are here online, and maybe you have not really opened your heart to Jesus to receive Him as your personal Lord and Savior, reminding yourself really or after hearing that message, knowing that all of that He did for me, well, yes, He did for you. And that is why you can open up your heart and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. I will pray a prayer of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Anyone in the room or anyone online that you want to say, Pastor, I want to give my life today. I want to give my life to Jesus this Good Friday of 2022. Why not pray this prayer with me? And I believe Jesus is going to come into your heart and you will be saved. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die at the cross for me. Today, I give you my life. I receive you into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior today and forever. Today, I am saved. Today, I am free. Thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen, Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. If you pray this prayer, you know, here on site, we want to give you a gift. We have a Bible for you. So if you go outside towards your right, you're going to see that sign. It says there, next steps. Please go there because we want to help you in your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Right? And also online, you know, please uh, just type it. I receive Jesus, you know, as my personal Lord and Savior today. And so please type that and people are going to get in touch with you because we want to help you grow in this wonderful adventure in Jesus. Come on. Are you blessed today, everybody? Amen. Everybody stand right now. Are we ready? One more round. Let's give Jesus the praise that He deserves. Come on. Let's praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. And I lift my eyes to you, creator of the world, and I stand in awe of you, of your glory, and I live to worship you. Sunday. Amen. Bring your friends. Bring your family. It's going to be glorious, I believe. Amen. Do not forget, go to New Life uh, website, newlife.ph because we have a devotional made ready for you and also uh, instrumental uh, music for all of you. All right? Spotify. Okay? You can log on to Spotify. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done for us. And thank you, Jesus. It's good to remember. And as we remember, we remember, Lord God, what you've done. And we, by remembering, receive the benefits of all that you've done. 
because what was finished 2,000 years ago is still in effect today. And so for everyone in the room and everyone online, I speak that the reality of the cross, the reality and the impact of the cross be real and that you will experience it in your lives and in your families, in your relationships, in whatever you do. I call you blessed and that cannot be changed. Know that you are a son. You will know that you're a daughter of God. Know that you are loved by Jesus. I speak that in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. God bless you. New life. We'll see you next, oh well, this Sunday. God bless you.